Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Clearly, I got the yellow memo today. Look at all the yellow on our set. It looks great, and you match the pillows. And the beer. I always try to match the pillows <laughs> and the beer at my house. It doesn't always work out. But today, I matched my uh, shirt to my heart. Black. My black heart, mm, you know. Not but, true at all, by but the way. Cheers on this National Craft Beer Week. D did you know that craft beer, I know it's kind of like a new ish thing, but it's not that new. Right. Because apparently there are like 7,000 little like craft breweries throughout the United States of America. It's a thing, but, and they have their own week, which is very impressive. What happens during the week? I guess you just drink craft beer, right? I guess you do. You know, we were out in Austin this last weekend, I told you, and I told you guys, for Steph Gary's wedding, and they have a ton of little breweries over there. I want to do like a beer tour sometime. I bet. This is actually quite nice. I know. Because you know, I'm not, I, I'm not a, I know, I'm not a beer drinker. But I'm it's really good not. though, right? I, I like it. It doesn't, it has kind of like a light citrus flavor to it. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. I have no idea. No, it's very, very good. Is Courtney this what we're... long said she hasn't loved beer, but I think Houston Life has sort of made you a convert. Our friend Chad Pilbeam is in the house today, and he hosts that radio show uh, called What's on Tap Radio along with James Simpson. Look at this, Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company, oh, and this perfect. is uh, the Great White. What we're drinking, is that what it says? Great White. Great white buffalo. Listen, I know you have a lot of questions, Courtney, clearly, but we're going to get to that <laughs> okay. later in the show, like a lot later. But it's kind of cool, though, to learn the history of beer and the different varieties and the whole method for making your own uh, craft beer. Some people do it at home. And the there's bathroom. actually, like, glasses that you're supposed to put certain beers in. Like, this is specific to this kind of beer. Yeah. Don't bother with that? I mean, Chad would probably tell you, yeah, go for the glass. But I think, I mean, you drink it out, out of a regular glass. You just poke a hole in it and open the top and see what happens? Remember when you did your champagne story, and I always thought it was not cool to drink champagne out of anything but a champagne flute. Yes. But you and your wine expert taught us that what? You drink it out of a white wine glass. And, w and what's the reason? It, it helps open up the wine. Opens you get the, the flavor, flavors. the bubbles. And you can and, get yeah. your nose way down in that glass when it has a wide neck on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But honestly, it tastes just as good, I think, out of a little paper cup. Or straight out of the bottle. <laughs> Not that we've tried both of those things. <laughs> so we've heard. Um, mm. You know what else we've heard? So here's one thing. Snapchat, I, I don't oh, know no. if you guys are totally into this, but your kids probably are. I don't find Snapchat very user-friendly. I always have to figure out with the kids on how, how to use it. They use it on my phone. I think it's confusing as well. I don't use it that often, but instead of having the back button on the left, it's on the right, and you have things are sort of opposite in this app. And then you save it, and I don't know where it is, but then there's, it's just funny pictures. So when my kids do it, I'll go back in the camera roll and find all these funny pictures, pictures that of them. Taken. Well, the thing that makes it great, all the fun filters. Yes. So you take a picture and it alters your face and sometimes your voice as well, oh, in case you're not a fun. Snapchat user. Um, but now you can uh, do the gender swap filter. And uh, we, we did that today. We Let me tell you something, if you haven't done it yet, uh, ladies, your swap to a man typically don't look great. I don't know what happened with Christine. I, I think she edited her photo. I'm just saying she looked beautiful as a man. The man. Everybody else looks not ridiculous. Quite as good. And by the way, we knew that this was happening because you guys remember a few weeks ago we had baby Elodie, the one-year-old here on the show. Beautiful. So her uncles, Florian and Tark, are two yeah. of our best friends from LA, right? Well, Florian works for Snapchat and uh, is the sweet German man. He's so great. And we were on our little road trip last weekend, headed out, and he said, "Oh, guys, oh. new filter coming today." A man can be woman, woman can be man. You have to try it. And baby filter as well. It's very good. Are you sure he's German and not Russian? Sorry, is my accent like really <laughs> offensively bad? <laughs> Sorry, Florian. But guys, we tried the filter. Yes. And holy cow, we about lost our minds. Who's because first? it was so much fun. Oh, it's me. Brace yourself. It's horrific. Oh, dear. I look like my 13-year-old my nephew. Well, but the <laughs> earrings and the necklace add a very nice touch. I mean, what what is happening there? Did you shave this morning, or am I just saying Listen, I got to, it's, yeah. Wow. I need I need a laser treatment, apparently. Oh, look dear. at that. It's horrible. You know what? It's not so great. It's bad. <laughs> and this, <laughs> this filter is rigged. It is rigged. It is. Well, I tried the guy filter, and what it does, it kind of like broadened out my jaw and gave me just a little more facial hair. 
Okay, do you want to see mine? Yeah, show everybody, because okay. yours is beautiful. Well, so I've been told that in this photo... You look like Dominique. A little bit like Dominique Soxa. What you do. You do. I hope Dominique is watching. Maybe she's at her gym right now working out and she's seeing this. But... Uh, I think you totally do. This filter, though, must whiten and straighten teeth and add, oh, dear. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. How in the world is that so pretty and the, and the gender swap for the man looks hideous? Why is that? <laughs> well, because it added makeup to my face and sort of like smoothed everything out. And... But is it not? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the cool thing is we found out it works on photos as well. So say hello to your new co-host, oh, Derica. I love Derica. <laughs> She's so sweet. My friend Becca in high school called me Derica. I thought it was an awesome nickname and I think we should bring it back. What do you guys think? I love it. I'll call you Derica. Or Dominica. Dominica. You totally could be sisters. Guys, okay, so we know we're not the only weirdos to play around with this in the office. By the way, we went through, I think, every, every possible filter, filter out said, there. We just, we're never gonna get these 10 minutes There's like back. the old lady filter, the clown filter, And then the, the voice monkey. changer. There's all of that. But if you guys have tried out this little gender swap filter or even the baby filter, send them in, post them to our Houston Life Facebook Please page. Please do, because it's Because we wanna be part of the fun as well. And I'm telling you, You'll never get the time back that you spend on this, but it is worth a very, very good laugh. It is worth it, especially when you start adding in other people, too, the, the photographs, and it's pretty And good. if you have questions about using Snapchat, don't ask Courtney. Don't, not at all. <laughs> I have no idea how to even find the photos or the filter. Oh, it's a little love. Uh... It's confusing. I've already, t I've already talked to Florian about it. Very not, it's not user friendly. And send your complaints his way, <laughs> not mine. Thanks, Florian, for letting us know. We had a great time playing with those filters. So, you know, as the summer weather is heating up, you've been rocking these super cool Birkenstocks that are silver oh, and fun. I love them. Yeah, I, I wear them all the time, or even my flip flops. I'm, if I'm not in heels, I'm always in those. Remember when Birkenstocks really became a thing? When was that? Early 90s? Yeah. Late 80s? Yeah, I mean, they've been a thing for a long time, but yeah, that was the kind of the resurgence back then, and that was with the wool socks. You wore them with socks. Oh, dear. Remember that? The, the thick wool the socks? The thick, like, hiking sock? It was I a look. Do. Well, I remember it was kind of a big deal for us because, you know, my, like, single sweet mom, like, buying a pair of shoes that was not, you know, yeah. under $10 was, like, a big deal. And so I remember when we got Birkenstocks, it was like, how long did we have to save to buy these? But... You'll have them forever. We paid extra for that little cork sealant. Uh -huh. Do you remember the cork sealant? It was yeah. like um, rubber like cement. You, right, you of. brushed it on. You brushed it on to preserve the cork. High maintenance shoes, you know, back in back in style. Anyway, I guess there's this debate going on online about people who are disgusted by men who wear Fur flip flops or sandals, just any kind of open toed shoe. They're disgusted about other people wearing them. Yeah, like yeah. specifically women saying men should not be wearing open-toed shoes in public. And it was actually posted on Today.com, part of our NBC family. I watch the Today Show every morning, by oh, the way. Oh, every morning. Every morning, can't miss it. So <laughs> they're asking the question, how do you feel about bro toes? I guess toes attached to bros. Okay. And uh, apparently, I think one of the issues is that men, stereotyping of course, sometimes have a problem with hygiene Oh, like bad toenails or something? Bad toenails, maybe bad toe jam. You know, toe jam. Not good. It's like toe lint, like anything I, that gets yeah. caught in your... Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. I have two boys. I know what toe jam is. But, so what do you think? I mean, is it I could gross care. I, I really don't care. If they want to wear sandals, let them wear sandals. I mean, I'm not saying don't walk into mass with it or something, but if you want to wear sandals, what are you going to wear at the pool? Apparently, you are at odds with our viewers, Really? Most of them right now are saying, should men care. wear sandals? By the way, vote along with us, click2vote.com from your phone or from your computer. Al Roker said that he doesn't like the feeling of the flip-flops on his feet because yeah. of the thing between your toes. Okay. And I kind of agree. I don't like that Well, then feeling. you could go for, like, the slide, right? The regular, like, rubber slide that, that's popular. Or, or a you cloth. could go for, like, a um, Well, the cloth version. Burk. Because then what goes between your toes, instead of being, like, a rubber stub, it's, like, just a thin yeah. piece of webbing. But the Birkenstock, I think, is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, why should other people's shoes bother me? That's what I think. There's so many other things in the world to worry about. Why do I care about who's wearing sandals? You have such a great attitude, Courtney. <laughs>
You do. I don't. I, am I supposed to care? What about people who have an obsession with feet, though? Then that's just weird. Have we ever talked about Derek Shore and socks? It's a YouTube video. <laughs> you guys Did you know? make it? No, I didn't. No, some lovely viewer, maybe you're out there right now. Thank you so much for being interested in my feet and for recording your television screen with your phone and then posting videos of me in socks to YouTube. Ew. It's true. Why? I mean. Why? Why? Because some people are into feet. Yeah. Uh, There's a channel, I guess, that's called, like, something about socks. I'm not... We don't need to drive you to this page. No. But apparently people are like into socks. And uh, I, I've worn socks on the show a couple times. Yeah. You know, well, like so we take our shoes off for a segment. You've done it too. This is so weird. What is happening? <laughs> I don't have any idea what is happening. All I'm saying is I'm trying to underscore the point that some people are grossed out by feet and some people are not grossed out by feet. How are these people walking around? Daily, like worrying about other people's feet. Do you know what I'm saying? Why is this person even caring about what socks or socks you're not wearing? This isn't just a person. If you look online, there is a I long don't list. See it. I don't oh want to see Oh my gosh, the comments will blow your mind. It, just look it up on today.com, the controversy over whether men should wear I'd rather play with shoes. the Snapchat filter. <laughs> because you look gorgeous as a man wearing socks. I can't socks. wait. <laughs> I wonder what the filter would do to your feet. Would it add socks or remove them? Depends on your filter. You know what we should talk about one day, though, is whether you should wear socks with sandals. Because I know that was a look at some point. I think then it really went away. I so I will tell you, in the athlete world, lots of athletes, my kids included. As an athlete. Not me. <laughs> but after soccer, when they take their cleats off and they're walking, what, everybody puts slides on. They take their, their cleats off and they put slides on. Like the Adidas slides or in Nike. And, yeah, they leave them on. They, after baseball games, after these boys play, and girls, play multiple hours and they're, you're hot and you're on a hot turf or something. Think how hot your feet are. Yeah. Those kids take those cleats off and they are in slides 24-7. Even supermodels do it now. I mean, if you look through any men's magazine, you look yeah. through any magazine, you'll probably see someone wearing socks and sandals at some point. But still, I, I don't know. I just have trouble. If I ever go out to the mailbox late at night or I go out to take the trash out and I've been wearing socks in the house and then I slip on a pair of Birkenstocks because we do have them or flip-flops. I always just feel so weird wearing socks. But you're going to the garbage. I know, but I still feel weird. I think like, what is I took the garbage out last night me? with a towel on my head when my hair was wet. You did not. Who cares? What? It's wet. There's that weirdo from Channel 2 taking out her trash with a towel on her head. Hey, I'm just keeping it real, people. Good for you. Straight okay. towel up on the hair, drying. My drying. Yes, it was pink. Good for you. Why not? I love how confident you are. That is awesome. That is great. Yes, I am confident. <laughs> and my brother thinks so as well. You know what? Your brother, Court, <laughs> Courtland. Courtland, yes. I think Twin you brother. look very handsome as a gentleman. He's older. That brother's older. I can't wait till Dominique gets here because I want to show her my photo, see if she agrees. <laughs> I can't wait to see like how her. pretty her gender swap photo is because it's not going to look as ugly as mine. I'm going to tell you that right now. She just did not look <laughs> ugly. Put that back up. It's, Guys, it's ridiculous. Listen. It's worth the laugh. You must agree. Courtney does not look that bad as a guy. And please, again, send in <laughs> your photos. This poor person. It'd be fun. It's an eyebrow wax. Today, we have so many great things on the show, by the way. Oh, hey, Dominique. What you doing there on our hey. television screen? Hey, Derica. girl. Hey. So, speaking of Dominique, because she is ageless. Age Beautiful. less. And, you know, to try to tap into the fountain of youth, there are so many different things that you can do. You can, you know, makeup and hair and all of that. Some people turn to injectables, and others are now turning to sort of like an Eastern form of traditional medicine. And you tried it out, right? It promises to, like, reduce the signs of aging? That's right. We are looking at how acupuncture is getting into the world of anti aging procedures. That's coming up next. So stay with us. Wow. Welcome back. If you're always searching for the next best thing in anti-aging, you might want to try, who knew, acupuncture. Well, it's a practice that's been used for thousands of years, of course, to heal pain. But now if you're after the non-tox route to reduce fine lines, lift and tone the facial muscles, well, acupuncture may be the answer. <laughs> 
Acupuncture is a form of alternative medicine, and most commonly, these very thin needles have been used for pain relief. Pain, stress, allergies, digestive issues, the list goes on and on. At Modern Acupuncture in River Oaks, they target all areas of the body, but clients are buzzing about targeting the face. So it's gonna improve complexion by just generally um, hydrating the skin and increasing blood flow, but it can also soften and reduce fine lines and wrinkles um, and then balance muscle tone. So sometimes we wrinkle on one side more than the other, so it helps with that as well. And for client Cindy Wynn, turning to acupuncture for the face is all about preventative medicine. Mainly fine lines, you know, deep set uh, smile wrinkles or under eye. What if somebody gets some sort of injection, filler, you know, can you get acupuncture? I mean, clearly asking for a friend. <laughs> yes, you can get acupuncture. We just ask that you wait two weeks before you, after the procedure, whatever procedure it is to get acupuncture. The session begins with laying down in a zero gravity chair and the needles are placed in and behind the ears, starting with those relaxation points. And then 10 to 11 acupuncture needles are placed in the face. Where the muscles and intersect with the skin, so we call them facial um, control points. So we'll do those 10 and then if you have anything like smile lines or crow's feet or the wrinkles in between your eyebrows will target that area as well. So what I've done is with the needles, I've created basically a wound in her skin. And it's gonna wake up the body, wake up the brain to start the healing process. And the healing process, that's what the, uh, stimulates the collagen production and increases the blood flow and just hydrates and heals from the inside. How are you feeling or what are you feeling? Um, it feels good. So the needle, when it comes in, it just feels like a basic brow pluck. So it's not so bad. Okay, come on into the Zen Den. Apparently it's my turn to get some acupuncture. I'm gonna do some needles on my face. I hear it works wonders for some fine lines, also some relaxation. I am a little nervous, but I'm looking forward to relaxing and settling my face down a little bit. My girl, Rachel, she's waiting for me. <laughs> All right. There's no feeling right now, but the entry has a little bit of a pinch, but nothing else. Two thumbs up, y'all. I, I can't believe I did it, I was nervous. Now, if you're interested in trying this, Modern Acupuncture is offering the first session for free through May 31st at all of their Houston locations. For more information on Modern Acupuncture, you can visit our site, HoustonLife.tv. So interesting, and how long did you leave those needles in your face? It's about 20 minutes, so that's it. You just kind of relax and sit there and, you know, you do look quite refreshed today. Well, thank you. Do you think you'd ever do it? Yeah, oh, do you, yeah. I've tried a lot of stuff, never acupuncture, but I'm totally curious. Well, now's your chance. Now's our chance. Yes. Do it for free, folks. Yeah, right. absolutely. No, they're here. They're here and ready for you. <laughs> We're gonna have you do your acupuncture oh. for our Houston Life viewers. Well, this is a fun <laughs> surprise. Hey there, how are you? So, Rachel, this is Derek. Hi, We're going to do the intro. She's going to get your needles started, the oh. acupuncture in your face. So stay with us, guys. Oh, wow. okay. Well, here we go. Yeah. No, you just... Well, acupuncturist Rachel Eckroth is joining us now from Modern Acupuncture. Derek is in the zero gravity chair. And Rachel, you've actually started with where you start normally for any acupuncture, acupuncture session, which is the relaxation points. Talk to us about Correct. that. Correct. They're behind the ear and in the ear. And these points we just have known for thousands of years um, provide relaxation for the body, the oh. whole body. And so now you're here for the facial, the sort of the anti-aging. So I'm gonna have you get started on Derek. And um, so go ahead and grab your needles. Okay. You have about how many? I'm gonna use 10. Okay. okay. Because I don't see any wrinkles or anything. So you just need oh, 10. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> no wrinkles at all. <laughs> We're gonna start here at the bottom. And I'll just work on one side and then the other. How you feeling, Dee? I feel great. And right? by the way, in case any viewers are wondering, I honestly had no idea <laughs> that we would be doing this on today's show. I surprised him. It doesn't normally happen. It's a good surprise. Um, and so, Rachel, talk to us about where these needles are being placed because you're specific to where the muscle is attaching, right? Exactly. They're, these um, needles go where the muscle attaches, where the muscles that control facial movement attach to the skin. So 
that's what, what's going to balance the muscle tone and prevent wrinkles since he doesn't have any. <laughs> I know. We have to do preventative measures for sure. Okay, so, and these are all around the face while Rachel continues to put these needles in. Derek, are you feeling anything on the entry at all? There's like a tiny sensation. Yeah, like a tiny little pinch, as you described, Courtney, on the way in. But other than that, no. Have you ever done acupuncture before? Never. First awesome. time. Although, and it's probably not a good idea for me to like turn my head, right? Oh, you can. You the, can? the needles are flexible, so you can. So if for some reason I rolled over onto a needle, it would just bend? It would just bend. Oh. But fancy. you don't need to roll over. I'm You're still really... I'm still not gonna turn my head. <laughs> oh wow, I can actually see the needles out of my peripheral. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> they're right there. You feel okay? <laughs> You're like, yeah, they're in your face. They are in your face. Yeah, and I so okay, you relax now because this is part mm. of your spa treatment, mm -hmm. basically. It feels so nice. And um, what are the benefits of this? Now I know you talked about this in the story, but you're creating basically um, kind of like a little tear, right? Yeah, a little uh, micro trauma to the skin, and that's going to wake up the ba the brain, the body to send its healing properties there, and so it's going to hydrate and increase blood flow and and start the healing process. I will tell you, after I did my session, um, and I walked away, and I, I forget where I was. Maybe it was here at the station. I can't remember, but somebody said, oh, your skin looks amazing. You're glowing. You have a little glow. Yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> even a couple days later. So I, I definitely attributed to that. I do wear a lot of makeup here as we do on set. But um, it was amazing to me just even the 20 minutes to just relax and mm -hmm. take care of that. What that does not only for the for the mind, but the body, right? Yes. Yeah, so you experience a little glow. Um, it can last for several days. And so we would have you come back in a few days to continue that. Um, also, you should start feeling like a little maybe hum, a little tingle in your body. And that's your body just relaxing and your blood pumping. It definitely feels different than if I were to just be laying here. Yeah, here without needles in my face. I mean, I definitely feel something going on, like more of a, it's almost like a conscious relaxation. Oh. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's well worded for sure. And this is also great for anybody who's suffering from acne too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with, with the acupuncture, your blood vessels increase. They, they grow larger. And so that's going to send, again, all the healing properties to heal the uh, acne wounds. And about how long should we see the results or how many sessions should we have for the, the cosmetic side of this? So we recommend that you do 12 treatments um, pretty close together. So about tw uh, twice a week for about six weeks. And you can do that once a year and then you can maintain for um, getting a treatment every other week, twice a month. Perfect. Kind of how you feeling, Derek? So good. Can I leave these in for the rest of the show? <laughs> <laughs> we want to remind you that Modern Acupuncture has that special going on right now with that first session being free. This is happening at all Houston locations until May 31st. You can gather more information on our website of HoustonLife.tv. Rachel, thanks so much. You're welcome. For coming in and being the mobile Modern <laughs> Acupuncture. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Pleasure. I feel Enjoy better it. already. You're glowing Great. already, honey. Don't worry, I'll, I'll take this. Close your eyes. Coming up next, how you can help fight hunger in the Houston area by buying one-of-a-kind ceramics. And if you aren't following Houston Life on Instagram yet, uh, what are you waiting for? Find our page to see all kinds of fun content, including some behind-the-scenes videos and, oh, so much more. You can search Houston Life TV. We'll be right back. All right, folks, did you know that with just $25, you can provide, get this, 75 meals for folks who are hungry? The 15th annual Empty Bowls Houston event makes it possible by providing more than 1,500 handcrafted bowls for sale. It's one of my favorite events. 100% of the proceeds from the sale of those bowls goes directly to the Houston Food Bank. Here with more, we'd like to welcome Heather Eisnagel with the Food Bank. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, both you and I love this event, Empty Bowls. And this is really interesting when we are talking about this because this is not something that's happening somewhere else. We are talking about the need for food every day right here in the Houston area. Right. It's absolutely the need for food here in the Houston area, but it's also a response from the community here in the Houston area, right? So all of the bowls at the event are handmade by local artists, um, whether they're ceramic, wood, glass, you know, whatever medium it might be, um, they're all from local Houston artists. And even the, the donations at the event, the demos at the event, even the music provided at the event, it's all local Houston. And they may be functional bowls, but folks, clearly you can see these are works of art. They are. Explain how this works. 
works. So for $25, you buy a bowl, but then you're also fed a very simple lunch. That's right. So for your $25 donation, it's, it's free to attend the event. Um, so it's only $25 if you choose to purchase a bowl. Um, and for that $25, you take home a one-of-a-kind piece of art, as well as you get a simple salad of soup, bread, and um, water. That's perfect. It, it really is. And what I love about this is I have a, a few of these bowls at home. And I remember when this first started, how, what year are we in for this? The 13th? 15th, 15th year. 15th 15 year. years. I remember doing the story when it first started. And so that bowl is really significant to me um, because it was made locally, not only that, but really making a difference, I think, mm -hmm. in our own backyard. And I think that's what people tend to forget is that we have a need for food. Right, and so um, we, we know that there are almost a million people in the Houston area who um, don't necessarily know where their next meal is going to come from. Uh, so every $25 bowl you provide, uh, every $25 bowl you buy provides 75 meals for those people in need. It's really unbelievable. I mean, you said nearly a million people are wondering where their next meal is, is coming from, and you guys annually are providing just about a million meals, right? 800,000 meals to people who need them. From the event? Not just the event, but the food bank. I mean, with your local partners and events like Empty Bowls. Right. So the Houston Food Bank last year actually provided 122 million nutritious meals. Oh, in my the goodness. Wow. Well, I way underestimated that. <laughs> My goodness, it's incredible work that you guys do uh, and so many great partners. And one of our uh, artists from this event is right here in the studio. I think we have a camera over on him. This is Thomas Perry. He's a local potter and member of uh, one of the founders of this event, Empty Bowls Houston. It's very cool. It's, it's, it, it's a long process to make this and we have a few of the finished products on our table. But just to watch him um, put this all together, I mean, when he first got into the studio, this was not happening. It was a bowl, uh, I mean, a, a, you know, a ball of clay. And so to see this happen and the, the tedious work that goes into it um, is, is really in incredible. What I love too, Heather, is um, let's talk about the food waste that we have in our city as well. We have a huge, like you both provide a solution for that, right? Right, exactly. So a lot of the food that is distributed by the Houston Food Bank is food that would otherwise go to waste. You know, we, we hear more now, I think, about the ugly produce and right. those kinds of things. But nearly half of what the food bank distributes every year is fresh produce. And very often it's the ugly produce that maybe you don't want to buy at the grocery store. I don't want to buy at the grocery store. But it's still but good. But it's absolutely good. Um, that and... Um, at grocery stores, we also have short-dated meat that gets frozen and distributed to the food bank. So we're providing really high-quality, you know, steaks even to, to those in need. Let's talk a little bit more about the details of this weekend's event because, as you mentioned, Heather, the event is free to attend. Uh, your $25 donation gets you a bowl and also a very simple meal. But isn't there a preview event in case people want first pick of these bowls? There sure is. I hear there may be a chance of rain Saturday evening, so if that scares you, you away. Um, we do have a preview event on Friday evening. It is $50 to attend that event, but uh, light bites, beer and wine are provided, uh, and you also get first shot at those bowls. Which makes it worth it. And remember, uh, every dollar you donate, because obviously you're not limited to that 25 or 50 for the preview night, but every dollar that you donate, 100% of the proceeds from this event goes straight back to helping to support the fantastic work of the Houston Food Bank. That's right. All of our bowls are donated by the artists. Uh, so, so not only their time and talent, but the financial cost of creating those bowls um, so that 100% 100 of those proceeds donate, is donated to the food bank. And well, just like Courtney's bowl from 15 years yeah. ago, it serves right. as a reminder. Absolutely. By the way, to attend the 15th annual Empty Bowls Houston this Saturday. Just visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website. Don't forget the preview party information on Friday. And Heather, thanks so much for coming in. And Thomas, as well, our hardworking artist over there. We do appreciate you. It looks like that bowl is coming along nicely, Thomas. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. Good luck with the events. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, three ways to revamp your skincare routine to help beat the Houston heat. Oh, we need it. The heat's coming. And tomorrow on the show, is there anything better than an ooey, gooey chocolate chip cookie? No. Mm. We're sharing foolproof recipes, and you can make it home. We'll be right back. All right.
All right, welcome back. We just saw the forecast. You know, the summer heat is coming, folks, and that means your skin may need some extra TLC. Well, here with some more tips, makeup artist Teresa Wynn. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Courtney. This is such a hot topic, and I know we live in this. We know it's coming for summer, but sometimes we just need a refresher course on how to keep us makeup on and our skin looking good, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So there are a key few things that I feel like everyone should be using, which is hydration and some sunscreen. So the first product we're gonna be using is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I love this tinted moisturizer. It's a gel, so it goes on very lightweight. But I applied it all over her face, starting from the center. Okay. Which really helps to add more coverage there. And then bring it down definitely to your neck, okay? And the whole point is just to even out the skin tone with this product, right? Absolutely. Well, also that and hydration and also adding sun protection. You know, sometimes mm. people say living in a, in a humid climate that we don't need to worry about hydration, but that's not true. That's not true. Like, your skin always needs moisture. If you don't give it moisture, it actually is going to crack and cause wrinkles, right? So I always make sure that you should always hydrate day and night. How does this product hold up to the humidity and the sweat factor? Because we've all been there. You're in your air-conditioned car, but by the time you get out and run Walk inside, the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, you're you're dripping. So how does this hold up? This one actually is great because it stays on all day. I do recommend it for more normal to dry skin types. Okay. If you're more oily, I wouldn't probably use it. But for anyone else, you're perfectly fine. But it stays on all day. Okay, and that's yeah. at Sephora and Ulta. It's thirty-two dollars yep. with SPF as well, which is very important. Yes. And speaking of SPF, you have a face powder too. I do. So I always tell people, they think that if you put it on the day, in the morning time, that's all you need, but you actually need it all day. You need to reapply. So, absolutely. So usually sunscreen lasts about two hours. After that, it kind of just kind of goes away. So this great powder is applying the SPF 30 again for you. It's going to help to kind of set your makeup again, but also give you the ac extra sun protection. I love it because both of these products offer broad spectrum protection, so against aging and burning rays. Awesome. And you know, for men, it's Men can okay. use this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like any of these products, but especially shiny. the powder. Absolutely, yep. And that's Derma E Sun Protection Mineral Face Powder available at Ulta for $21.95. So use your coupon on that if you can at <laughs> Ulta. I love that. Very nice. Thanks so much, Kenya. Okay, so moving along, now we've got some um, highlighting. So don't forget the highlighting, even though it's summer, right? <laughs> yeah, so summer is all about glowing skin. So once you use that tinted moisturizer for that light coverage, using this palette, I love using the lighter shades to kind of give that skin a glow. So we're going to put this on along the tops of her cheeks. So wherever the highest points of your face are, just apply the product. So bridge of nose and also like underneath her brow. And Valeria already has beautiful glowing skin, she but does. this product, Teresa, it has a little bit of a shimmer in it, right? It does, which gives you more of that glow. So it gives you that natural luminosity. Um, I also love this bronzy shade. I put it on her, um, her eyelid earlier. So it's very versatile, this palette. Interesting too. You did the Cupid's bow just on, I did, on, on her yeah. top it lip makes there. Her, her lips pop. <laughs> and I think too, a lot of times people are nervous about doing the highlighting because you don't want to have the streaks. So if you've yeah. added too much, how do you tone it down a little bit? <laughs> That's a if great question. If you do add Seriously. too much, you would just use maybe like a powder. Okay. And kind of just blot it down so it kind of you know simmers it down a little bit. But that's why I always recommend using applying little. Yes. Because if you apply too much, it's hard to take away. And, and that small brush helps. Yeah, yeah this kind of help. a fluffy yep. brush is mm -hmm. good, right? Kind of like crease brush or something. It is, Very yep. similar to that. So that's yeah. going to be something that's not going to give you a lot of too product much placement. Yeah. yeah. Right, Courtney. Right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank I you. I love it. Okay, and that palette is... Um, Oh, we love NYX. NYX, that Born to Glow highlighting palette, 25 bucks for those six shades in there. So that's a pretty good deal. It's a great deal, deal yep. <laughs> and in terms of the, um, the additional sun protection factor, do you always recommend that someone use like a separate sunscreen? You know, start with a moisturizer, then use a sunscreen? Because I know the products you showed today do have an SPF, but we can't forget about, you know, lotions that also contain it. I think either way is fine. If you have a moisturizer with sunscreen in it already, that's a perfect product. But if your moisturizer does not have any sunscreen, I recommend adding that sunscreen after your moisturizer. Okay. Because you need that sun protection. And then the powder is perfect for reapplying throughout the day. Yeah, it's perfect to, to just get throw in your bag in. and be perfect. Yeah, because we don't want any wrinkles or no. aging spots. <laughs> All right. Well, Teresa, thanks so much for uh, stopping by. And uh, Valeria and Kenya, thank you as well. Your Thank skin you so is much. flawless. And as always, <laughs> if you'd like to connect with Teresa, you can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website. Thanks, ladies. Thank you so much. Thanks. Coming up after the break, crack open a cold one. It's Craft Beer Week. Uh -oh. We're sampling a few of the different varieties. And we're learning how you should never open a beer. Oh, yeah. This is critical oh, information. Yes. Critical. Don't go away, guys.
Well, cheers to craft beer. It is American Craft Beer Week, and our next guest is here to help us celebrate in style. He always does, right? He's a certified Cicerone and host of What's on Tap Radio. Chad Pilbeam is back in the house. And you know, Chad, I have to say I am shocked that our producers actually invited you back, considering uh, what happened last time. Statue of Limitations ran out uh, on that. Uh, we had a little accident last time um, uh, with uh, the weatherman. Um, we had a little accident? Okay, I, no, right. no, 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 no. It didn't air live on the show. It happened after the show. So since you guys missed it, let's roll the clip. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna see if I can pull this off. But you're getting, aren't you getting a beer everywhere? No, it shouldn't. It should work just fine. Yeah, it famous last words. Yeah, word here. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. <laughs> you don't have to be on TV or anything, right? Thankfully, no. Seriously? <laughs> but I did just get this. And that's. Famous yeah, last words. No, it should oh, work just fine. Hold my beer and watch this. Exactly. Yeah. By the way, a fine segment uh, on What's on Tap Radio, which you can listen to. So, um, so uh, <laughs> I, and here I thought I was just going to come and say, uh, on behalf of James Simpson, Kimberly, and everybody at What's on Tap Radio, happy American Craft Beer Week, everybody. But no, we got, yeah, we got to hey, go back everybody, into the, everybody's fair game on this show. We go back into the archives and pull out my gaffes and. Goofs. How about on behalf of uh, Justin Stapleton's dry clean? Cleaning bill. Justin's just uh, waiting in the wings here. No, no, uh, get no, no. This, he has a plastic get bag on. Oh my God. Yes, he he's got a plastic bag on. So I'm he's sorry, just Stage. Prepare. All right, listen. <laughs> all right. Anyway, yes. Last time I was on, there was a chance of showers. I just didn't know that it was going to be beer. <laughs> and so uh, American Craft Beer Week is upon us. You can have anything on the table, sir. Okay. I didn't get a chance to pay for his dry cleaning, but thanks for having me oh, back. Oh, he's got the bill. Don't worry oh, about yeah, it. I know. We'll give oh. it to you. Oh. Is it true there are really 7,000 craft breweries in the United States? That number seems a bit inflated. I know, it's closer actually to uh, 7,700. No. Yes, there's a new brewery opening every 10 and a half hours. So, uh, yeah, if, in case you're running, you're, you're out there looking for that new beer, that something new, um, good chance you'll find it. Um, and here in the greater Houston area, we're somewhere around, if you, if you get outside of Houston proper, greater Houston area, we're looking at somewhere around 70 different breweries. That's, that's unbelievable. Huge. Because back in the day, it used to just be like, you know, you'd grab a bud or a whatever. Well, that was my question is, and this is probably going to be a silly question, so there I'm going to apologize no silly off the Please. top. What qualifies a craft beer? Okay, so uh, the, the Brewers Association, by the way, kudos to everybody out there in Boulder who's doing a great job. Um, they define it as a small, independently owned craft brewery who focuses on traditional brewing practices and ingredients. Well, the, the definition has been redefined a couple different ways, but what we look at, if you look at these beers over here on my right, uh, they're... Uh, you can see some of the, the pioneers that really got this thing started. And that th those breweries were making traditional craft beer, small batches using traditional ingredients based on the German purity law uh, called the Reinheitsgebot, the purity law of 15, 16, which says we're only going to use all natural ingredients, barley, hops, yeast, and water, nothing else. The well, Reinheitsgebot? Yes, the Reinheitsgebot. The Courtney, wasn't that your nickname in high school? Still is, actually. That's, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. Uh, so, Common uh, spelling. That's right. Hashtag drink good beer. Okay, and uh, <laughs> since then, the breweries have just gone crazy. It's, it's gone from barrel aging to adding exotic ingredients to hazy, and uh, we're featuring right here, just we're going to, you guys ready for another beer? Because Sure. I'm about out here. This yeah. Buffalo Bayou Great it's White very that we started nice. the show with is so, so good. It's very well, nice. I want to crack open this one right here. This right here is uh, Wake and Bake, and this is their cream ale with, with uh, coffee. coffee. Wait, yes. before you crack it open, okay. um, we, we oh. want to be sure oh, you have or your special oh. helper. <laughs> Okay. Here, come a little closer. Come Everybody got their closer. safety. It's oh, like Bill, science on, guy. Safety glasses safety on. Here we go. All right, here we go. first? Oi, oh, hey! Whoa. All right. We're safe. Well done. <laughs> well done. In the clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. All right, so okay. here we go. I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this for Staples, myself. Staples, how much but was that dry cleaning oh, bill, by the way? Uh, your glass. Oh, okay. So hang on. I'll just okay. list it from here. Okay, there I'm you go. I'm that kind of girl. Oh, okay. Oh, straight from the can. Who? Oh, wow. It smells like coffee. It does smell like coffee. You can smell it from here. Wow. That's right. You want to smell that before it I take a sip? It's fantastic. So, wow. Yeah. Right? How Drink dark How dark is that beer? Well, you see it right here. There it is in the glass. So, a little misleading. So, a lot of people, they'll say, oh, well, it's got coffee. It must be like Guinness. No way. Uh, our friends over at Buffalo Bayou, they, uh, they no. said, you can actually take coffee and put it in a traditional cream ale, which is an American-style craft beer. So, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy wow. my... Uh, my, oh. my coffee. This is, this is, yeah, we drink coffee in the afternoon. 
just so happens at happy hour, we're getting this. Yeah. You and like Justin, that? I know you still have to do the weather, so we can't offer you any. Bosses are watching. Bosses yeah. are watching. Did oh, you oh I see. I do like it. Yes. Oh, you don't like no, it? No, I don't like that one. I'm sorry. Well, I, I have something else for you okay. to try then. See, this is the beauty of American Craft Beer Week. You get out there, you try all these different beers, you, and... Buffalo Bayou makes Dream Sickle. Now, this takes you back to when you were a kid and you weren't drinking beer, but you okay. were chasing the ice cream truck. And this right here, go ahead. I want you to taste that. Go ahead and. And the Dream Sickle, like that was the old orange popsicle with the cream in the middle, right? Yeah. Now, now you're, now, now you're oh, picking I up. Loved, I love right the Dream Sickle. Yes, go ahead. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, wow. Uh oh. Wow. Crazy. You can that hear. That tastes like a dreamsicle. You, you hear that little jingle on the truck going down the street, and you're like, I, I got to go to the brewery. The ice cream man. I mean, that is so strange. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. American craft beer <laughs> movement. And that's the thing, is, is it's evolved it's like the so jelly much. Belly. That it doesn't, it, it's no longer just fitting into little different style categories. It's, it's being innovative and creative. That's and, crazy. And these independently owned craft breweries are just coming up with all kinds of new ideas, new styles. Uh, in fact, um, I don't know, were you ever a brownie or a Girl Scout? No. You weren't. I was not. Are you asking me or Courtney? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was silence. I was not. I know. I'm yeah. sorry. I was, kid I was waiting for your answer, too. Yes. <laughs> well, not sure where that question was. The was answer is no. The for answer both is of us. no. But I want to go ahead and this, just to show you how much fun you can have with the, uh, the American craft beer movement, is you can actually go and throw in thin mint cookies into a beer. And this is thin mint stout from Buffalo Bayou. Oh, now I've eaten, I've eaten cartons of thin mint. I yes. mean, now they've gone too far. Thin mint stout? Abs no. Oh, the really? Mm -mm. This is not too far. Actually, they are now making Fruity Pebble beer. They are making uh, beer with Lucky Charms. Yep. That's and the if, strangest thing I've ever heard. They are, can, can I try this already? Absolutely. Yeah, you're just going to go straight Sorry. out of the bottle, aren't yeah. you? Just, I'm that kind of girl. The rules just went right out the window. The yes, sir. By the way, for those of you keeping score at home, okay, oh. what we want to do is we want to pour this into a glass, <laughs> and we want to go ahead and let it open up a little bit. Now, I'm not the biggest Thin Mint guy it's myself, very but dark beer. I'm also yeah. celebrating American Craft Beer Week, so why not go ahead? And, and that's another thing you should do during American Craft Beer Week. Branch out, try different beers. Uh, the Brewers Association in Colorado, they'll tell you seek the seal and if you're wondering what that seal looks like well there it is right there the little independent craft seal okay. right there on Beautiful. the side of the can you can see it it's a little tiny chat we're out of time yeah. oh no yeah. we're out of time all right we're gonna have to crack it up and there it is. justin thanks for coming by too uh stay, steer clear of that guy you'll have to take your hey, seat back look at this. far i'm dry I, I, and he wore a white shirt this is fantastic <laughs> brilliant about what's on tap radio you can visit our website houstonlife.tv cheers guys cheers, cheers. we'll be right back i'm gonna stick to the dreams this is minty fresh yeah. i mean it's so crazy you isn't it oh yeah i've had that one it's good yeah Coming up tomorrow on uh, Houston Life, how to master the classic chocolate chip cookie. Tomorrow, by the way, is National Chocolate Chip Day. Oh. And our guest, Ashley from Ashley Cakes oh, in the Heights, she's going to show us her secret to making the best chocolate chip cookie. I cannot wait. wait. Also, the upper hand is joining us back again. We have a Mother's Day makeover. We're going to have the big reveal with our custodial staff member, Rosa. She has a dramatic hair color change, a little bit of a trim, and so we have a fun makeover to show you. Oh, looking forward to that. Also, earlier we were chatting about the gender swap filter on Snapchat. <laughs> and guys, thank you so much for sending in some of your photos. Uh, I think we have some to show right now. Oh, huh? let's look. Wait. Is that me? That look that looks like you. It does. This is from uh Cecilia. From, from who? Like Cecilia we know. Oh, Cecilia. Oh, okay, Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia, we, thank we you. We definitely are related. <gasps> oh, Steven. See, Steven, the men, the man to a woman, these filters are amazing. I mean, beautiful in either version. Yes. The man or the woman. Love it. By the way, we did get a comment from Rachel on Facebook saying, Courtney, you are cute as a boy. You just need a little grooming. <laughs> I agree. I agree, Rachel. <laughs> My thoughts, exactly. Seriously. Cheers. Thanks to Chad Pilbeam for the Cheers. beer. Cheers, yeah. Um, is it beer or mouthwash? I don't know. Just kidding. It's delicious. It's a dreamsicle. <laughs>